Hey friends, this is Wendy. Welcome. I'm so happy that you're here. It's been a while since I've been on camera with you. And today's video is just kind of a catch up on the craft room because we did that whole thing where we were cleaning out little areas in our craft room and I made a ton of progress and honestly, I'm pretty much done. So um, I don't have a lot left to really show, but I bought some items. I wanted to do a little haul video with you and show you some stuff I got from Target. Um, where else did I get stuff from? Oh, Staples, Target for organizing. And then also I just thought I would show you kind of what I have going on in the craft room and some of the new things that I'm going to be trying. So first things first is, um, let me just show you around a little bit what things look like right now. Okay, so over here on the back desk, we have some card classes and different things like that that are in progress. And basically, I'm in the middle of designing some stuff. And what I like to do is hold out product for Miss Deborah. So for example, these, these um, dies are dies that like Miss Deborah has a die out of this pack that she's using right now to cut a card class for me. So what we do is anytime we have dies that are being utilized, we actually leave them out of their normal container. Now, I always get questions whenever I show this about where I got this storage and the um, what it is. So all of this is from Stampin' Storage. This is how I store my dies. I just really like them in a clear folder. Now I store them backwards. You're supposed to store them facing the other way, but that is weird to me in my brains. So I store it this way and you know, to each their own. And then you have these little dividers. Anyways, I'll link to these below the video and to the block, not blocks, boxes because you can purchase this stuff on Stampin' Storage and it's great for storing your dies. So that's that. All right, and then, um, so then like over here, for example, I'm in the middle of designing this class, which will come out in the month of March. Um, you're seeing this video before then, but because I use like this die on one of the cards, I'm leaving these dies right here. But one of the things I was noticing I'm having a trouble with is I need a place to store this stuff, but so that it's not just in a bunch of random piles. So I had that on my mind when I went shopping. The other thing here is these are thank you cards for the month of February for my customers. I've kind of started them, but Miss Deborah will finish them. So again, a way to store them but have them out better than what I'm doing. So I'll show you what I got for those in just a minute. Over here, we have um, candy that just needs to be dealt with. This is a um, light ring and phone holder that I've just never put together because I'm lazy. We've got some boxes down there that are just totes we use for dividing things up. Of course, we've got our haul here, which I'll show you in a little bit. Up here, I've got extra card kits that I'm going to sell on my shop, but I just haven't gotten around to it yet. Um, so that's what those are. And then here is some more candy. Probably need to put that in the candy bin. Over here, these are cards I've taken out and grouped together that are also going to go in my shop. Um, I've taken photos and I've labeled them. I just need to finish them up. But Miss Deborah puts an envelope with every card, puts the cards in a cello, and then we package them. So um, these all have to get dealt with. And then I've got a pack of leftover bags here that are gonna get sold. Um, this one's for Miss Deborah, needed an extra one for a friend, but these were for the paper party retreat and I didn't sell quite as many as I hoped and so I'm gonna have these for sale on my site. And then over here is looking really good. These are just all my empty containers and totes for organizing and doing different things. So I've left those just sitting here. These are all empty. Everything over here is empty. I'm not sure exactly what I'm going to utilize all this for yet, but we're working on it. And then in this box is just retired product that is already in my online store. So if you are looking for older product, getting it at a better deal, make sure you check out my site and I will link to that below the video. 
and all of these cards will be on on the site very soon okay everything else is pretty much organized one of the things look at on my sweater I've got a tag okay so one of the things in the video that I wanted to address is my Copic markers so my Copic markers are down here um, and let's turn you around so we can have a talk so in a previous video, um, I talked about that there would be some things changing on my channel and on my blog. And that is that I'm going to be incorporating other product besides Stampin' Up! into my crafting experience. This is a personal decision for me and um, I have taught, let me just, let me just sit down so we can just have a talk. So I have taught um, about how to run a Stampin' Up! business in the past, not only on my YouTube channel, but then also um, like my team and stuff. And you may have noticed I don't really even talk about uh, joining my team anymore very much or anything like that. There's all these regulations now about it and Stampin' Up! has cracked down really hard on promoting any sort of like, I can't say anything on a on a video or in a blog post that would lead you to believe you're going to make millions of dollars with Stampin' Up! Period. Um, first of all, I don't make millions of dollars with Stampin' Up! Uh, I pay my bills, I do okay, but like even that I'm supposed to say, okay, even the fact that I just said that, I'm supposed to say only the top like 0.01% of people in the company earn money doing this or something along those lines. My results are not typical. I'm supposed to say all of these things. Okay. So basically what has happened is I've kind of just quit talking about it so much because I'm not really a hundred percent sure what I should say and shouldn't say and can say and can't say. Essentially, I can make no promises. So please, that is my disclaimer for this video. If the regulation police watch this video. I am making no promises of any kind at all if you decide to purchase the Stampin' Up! Starter Kit. Zero. So please know that if you purchase the starter kit, you're simply going to get to purchase product at a discount and that's where it ends. If anything above that, beyond that, that's another discussion for another time. I am not talking about it on here. So um, bottom line is that um, makes it difficult for me to really share a lot of my experience with Stampin' Up. Okay, all of that is to say, I'm also on kind of an interesting creative journey personally. So I've talked about this a little bit in a previous video, talking about it a little more here that, um, Essentially, I love to color. One of my very favorite things to do is color. And while I do enjoy Stampin' Up's products that they do have available, there are a lot of other products out there on the market for coloring. And I wanna get better. I wanna become a better colorist. And there's not gonna be an opportunity for me to do that just using Stampin' Up product, period. So in order for me to expand, I mean, it would be like, I'm trying to think of a good analogy. You guys get it, you're smart people, you understand what I'm saying. I wanna do more things and ha have more creative outlet. So as you've seen on my channel, I'm still doing Stampin' Up! classes. I am not going anywhere. I have no intentions at this point in time to leave Stampin' Up! I've received some messages about that. Um, will I be with Stampin' Up! forever? I don't know. I don't know what the future holds. But for right now, yes, I am with Stampin' Up. Yes, I am selling product. Yes, I have a team. Yes, we do things together. So all of the, nothing else has changed. If you want, you could just look at this like I'm adding to my channel. I'm not taking away from my channel. Does that make sense? I hope that makes sense. There definitely has been some questions. I've received comments and questions from other demonstrators who are not associated with my team, but just other demonstrators in general. Like, what are you doing? Why are you doing this? Because it's not popular, to be really totally honest with you. Like, there is a line of thinking within the Stampin' Up! world that 
is kind of like you just exclusively use Stampin' Up! product. And I have followed that line of thinking for years. It has served me well to follow that line of thinking. I'm not complaining about that and I'm not downing anybody else who is following that line of thinking. So please don't come at me. Understand that these decisions are mine and mine alone because I am a human being with an individual thought and individual feelings. So is it possible to be a Stampin' Up! demonstrator and share other product? Yes, it is. It is not against their rules. It is not against compliance. I have letters proving so. Unfortunately, it is against their policy for me to post an excerpt from their demonstrator policy handbook. So I can't post that for you to, sh to prove it to you. But I'm going to tell you right now that if I was doing something that was not within compliance with Stampin' Up!, they would come at me because it's happened before. So if I do something and let me explain when I did do something before it was unintentional, but there's plenty of eyeballs watching me. I guarantee you there are some other demonstrators watching this video who are probably higher up with Stampin' Up! meaning they do well with the company. Again, top 0.1% or whatever I have to say, disclaimer, not typical, all of those things. Um, I guarantee you there'll be some that watch this video and have strong feelings about the statements I'm making and the decisions I'm making. That's okay. That's okay. Um, my decisions are mine alone and it may not be the popular thing to do within the Stampin' Up! world or community. I don't care. I don't care. I'm not trying to win a popularity contest. I'm trying to do what fits me best and fills my heart with the most joy. And since I've made these decisions, I have found so much more joy in creating. I lay in bed at night and I'm thinking about like ideas, not only for Stampin' Up! classes, but for coloring and different things for the Creative Vault. So you know I've created the Creative Vault. That's a membership program. It is $14.95 a month. If you want to join it, you get the first month half off. And me and my sister did a live event in there where I just colored and had a great time and we had the best time laughing and carrying on and being silly and talking about all the things we wanted to talk about. So all of that is to say this is all just about me following my own journey with my creativity and if you're here for it I'm so happy. I'm grateful for that and I appreciate your feedback and your love and your support and kindness and right now as of today that's what i'm doing so there it is that's what's happening okay now that being said we have to address the copic marker situation which is part of this video sorry this video is kind of long and a little topsy-turvy corner turvy all the things so i have this whole thing of copic markers they're down underneath as you just kind of saw on a shelf down below my desk and I don't use them for two reasons. For years I didn't use them because Stampin' Up! released Stampin' Blends, okay? So that's, whoops, that's these guys. Stampin' Blend markers come in two colors, a dark and a light. Uh, not two colors, but two tones, a dark and a light for all the colors that they offer. These are great starter markers. So I've had questions in the past about comparing Stampin' Blend markers to Copic markers. They're not a comparison, <laughs> first of all. There is no comparison. It's That's like comparing apples and oranges, as they say. So Copic markers are for artists. They are expensive, they have refills, and they have a whole coating system that you have to learn to use, unless you're just gonna color in one color. If you're not gonna do any shading, it doesn't matter. But if you want to learn how to use Copic markers the way other people use them in the card making world, which is with shading and shadowing and all of that, then you kind of have to learn the system of how they work because Copic markers are numbered on the top. So there's like, for example, like, um, let me just grab some, let me just grab a couple. 
So this one, there's like an R27, R29, R25, R20, you know? So you have to learn how to use those together in order to make a blend and make everything look the way it's supposed to look. There is a learning curve to Copic markers, in my opinion. Now, again, if you were to just buy a red, a blue, a yellow, an orange, and color with them flat, fine, no problem. But if you wanna learn how to do all the blending and the fancy stuff, then you have to, to learn the system, how it works. So the best person I have found to learn that from for myself has been Sandy Allnock because she actually has like a hex chart that teaches you, you can color it in and it's, it's a very in depth and that she has a class for it and everything. So I've taken her classes. I love her work, her Copic work. She's gotten a little more into fine art now, which is wonderful for her. Again, she's following her own creative journey. I just particularly don't care for it as much as I do her Copic marker coloring. I love her Copic marker coloring and teaching about that. So anyways, um, when you're talking Copic markers versus Stampin' Blends, you cannot compare them. Stampin' Blend markers are a perfect place to start for somebody who's just curious about al alcohol markers, how they work, and getting started with them. They're $9 for a set, so you get the light and the dark for nine bucks, and they don't have refills. So when the nib goes bad or they dry out, you throw them away, you get a new one. Like it or don't like it, that's, that's how it is. With Copics, you can replace the nib, you can refill them. Now my friend Kelly, who is an amazing Copic colorist, she's on YouTube, look her up, Kelly Taylor. She also is a contributor to the Creative Vault. So she has a coloring video in the Creative Vault every month and her what, the one she did this month was amazing. It was all about how to like color with stencils. It was fantastic. So anyway, also she does story time like I do, which is really fun. So if, so somebody like her, for example, I forget where I was going with, oh, so she has said that the new refills for Copic markers are not as awesome as the old refills. So I don't know what all that's about. Um, but one of the things that I'm going to do in this video is you're going to see that I'm going to change how I store my Copic markers and I'm not going to put you through this, but I need to sit and test every single Copic marker because it's been so many years since I've used them that I need to see which ones need a nib replacement, which ones need coloring refills, color refills. Um, I need to look at my refills and see what I have. Don't even know what I have. And I wanna store them differently. So the way they're stored right now is in a beautiful wooden storage thing where you put each marker in the hole. I don't like it because it's hard to like take them in and out bugs me. So I want to store them totally different. And so I got a couple things to try to do some different stuff. So we'll see if any of that works. Um, and then I just want to show you all the other goodies I got and that's it guys. That's what I have going on. So, um, this week I'm going to be releasing my goal. My goal is to release a fun fold card class. Um, I have high hopes for getting that done. So it, hopefully if that gets done, you'll see that this week. Of course, um, I've got other things going on. So anyway, that's what's happening. So let me flip the camera around so I can show you the stuff I got from Staples and Target. If you have any questions for me about craft room organization, some of the changes that I'm talking about with my YouTube channel, um, storage stuff, any of that, feel free to ask. I just ask that you be kind. If you don't understand like why I'm changing things or maybe why my journey is being, you know, going differently or whatever, that's okay. You don't have to understand it. You know, each person is different. For me personally, it's just about really getting back in touch with why I started doing this in the first place. When I joined Stampin' Up, Stampin' Up was the only product I had ever used for stamping. I had never used anything else because I wasn't a stamper, I was a scrapbooker. So that's the thing, like when I started doing this, I just did it to get the paper at a discount. I didn't really care to stamp. I had never stamped anything in my entire life. 
So then that segued into stamping and my passion grew for card making versus scrapbooking. I haven't scrapbooked in years to be totally honest, which is something I've considered bringing back into my life. Um, so when that passion kind of changed, it made sense for me to join Stampin' Up! And then having a business kind of was just an evolution of that. It wasn't a plan. I never really planned any of this. It just happened. So here we are, year 13. This year will be 13 years of me doing this as a demonstrator. And, you know, I just... Over the last six months to a year, I started feeling more and more emotions and feelings around what I was doing of them not bringing joy and not bringing happiness. And I thought, no, I'm just not, I'm not, I'm not going to live like that. So 2023 marked a year for me of really rediscovering my joy in creating and it has been like a weight has been lifted off my shoulders. And while I love Stampin' Up! products, I also, there are times, like this is the best example I have. I've outgrown this. So as a creator and somebody who enjoys like coloring, for example, it's like a child, right? When a kid learns to color with color crayons, they start with those big old giant color crayons. Then they use normal color crayons. Then maybe they start using pencils, uh, colored pencils. We evolve, we change, we grow. Now, if that, if coloring with stamp and blends is all you ever do and you're totally fine with that and that's content for you, that's okay. Not everybody has a desire to grow in their creativity. Not everybody has a desire to color. I have a friend who hates coloring. She does not like it at all. So for her, Stampin' Blends are great because she could just slap some color down and move on with her life. For me, I get so much joy out of coloring and making like a really beautiful scene card. So I just was like, you know, it's time for me to embrace that growth. I've outgrown just doing Stampin' Blends. Now, are they great to use in a pinch? Absolutely. Are they great for me like when I'm teaching classes? Absolutely, because they're quick and easy and most people want quick and easy. That's just the truth. But for my own satisfaction, my own joy, I want to take it to the next level. The really cool thing is you can purchase some Copic markers to complement your stamp and blends and you can use them together because they're alcohol markers. So I'm planning to eventually be able to show you guys some of that so that if you have stamp and blends, but you want to like take things up a notch, but you really don't want to commit to like purchasing a whole bunch of Copic markers, you will be able to just like substitute a couple here or there. So anyway, that's all maybe down the line when I get more comfortable with what I'm doing. Um, Anyway, so that's what we're going to do. Okay, I'm going to turn you guys around so you can look at all the goodies that I've got. All right, I have you pretty zoomed out here because I want you to be able to see everything. So at Staples, I found this little super cute container. It's by Martha Stewart. Should have known. I didn't even realize that. But um, anyway, it's got this rope with the thing, which is funny because at Target, I had found these. So these are bigger and they were less expensive and these were at Target and I got these first and then I went to Staples and I found this. The reason I want to, to get these is because, let me pull my Copics out so I can show you what they're currently stored in. Ugh. Okay, so here are all of the Copic markers that I own and this is how they're stored. This thing is gorgeous, but the thing I don't like about it is you pull it out and you have to like kind of wiggle them back in because they see just right there, they like will catch this little, um, the closure parts will catch on this thing. And I, I really don't like that. And I don't like going like in and out. So what I want to do 
is I wanted to find containers that were small enough that I could have like all of my pinks and reds like in one basket like this maybe even pinks reds and purples I don't know but you guys get where I'm going with this and then it would be just easy to like pull them in and out to see watch let me show you on this one see here how I'm like going to pull it out okay that one came but see like they stick <coughs> I don't like that it's very annoying to me so I thought if I had them all in a basket and there's enough of them they'll be they won't fall over like that right so if we pull all of my R's out R R's and maybe RV's. So R obviously stands for red and then RV is red violet. And truthfully, like after watching my friend Kelly for years, she always says, you know, you kind of just use the same ones over and over and over, but I don't really even know which ones those are for me yet. Because again, like I said, I have all these and then I have not used them because I've been dedicated to using just Stampin' Up products. So um, with this big change I'm making where I'm going to venture into using some other products. So see, like, I think this looks so nice and pretty just in a basket. But as you can see, this basket is kind of really even too big. So I don't know. Maybe you guys have some suggestions for me. I know Christina Warner uses these things. Let me grab one. I have one. I think these are from the container store, if I remember correctly. I have several of these. Uh, let's see if this would be any better. Yeah, that's better, huh? So maybe I'll return this little basket to Staples, except I really do love it. <laughs> I But I don't know where, I can't remember if I got these at the container store or if I got them at somewhere else. So then the other problem is, okay, like I have a lot of reds and pinks, reds and red violets. But as you can see, like I really don't have that many yellows. So... Then my question is, well, what, how do I store my, those? And you know what I'm saying? So if you guys have any ideas for me on how to store these better, um, I am super open to suggestions because I, I would love a way to store these in a way that's super accessible that I could just, because I even thought, well, what if I have like a bigger basket like this? And then littler ones inside, like littler containers. And then I just have like one big basket with my all my Copics in it. But then there's smaller ones. Does that make sense? So let me know what you guys think. And I don't know why I have an obsession with these rope baskets, but I do. And these are so cute. I probably should return this, but I'm probably not gonna just because it's cute and I love it and I'll figure out something to do with it. So... Anyway, that's that's where I'm at with my Copic marker stuff. I need to find a solution. I don't really know what it is, but I'm trusting that all of you amazing people out there are going to have an idea for me. Okay, so that's one of the things I got in my haul. So let's put these aside, get them out of the way so I can show you the rest of the stuff I got. Uh, you know what? Uh, yeah, let me just put it over here. Okay, I want to put these Stampin' Blends back and the one I dropped on the ground. Okay, I also purchased more um, masking tape because uh, I never have enough masking tape for package packaging, shipping. And then, oh, I got this too. This is for my niece, so it's her birthday soon and I'll show you everything I got for her. So then um, at Target, okay, so that's everything I got from Staples. 
This was, by the way, if you like these poppets or if you have a kid around, my Staples had these for $2. They were discounted. So if you want to get one. Okay, so at Target, I found this really cute paint by sticker kids book. This is for one of my nieces. These are my nieces that live in Montana. So I'm sending them both their birthday presents. And I thought this was really cute. So you have like this whole picture and then you go into the back and you peel off the stickers and you put it in and it like colors the whole thing. So I thought that was neat. And then this is going to be also for my niece um the same one so this is the older one so she'll get the jewelry and this and then my younger niece is going to get the magic model magic that dries and she'll get the poppet and then I got her these they are face and body crayons <laughs> because she's a stinker and a mess. So I can totally see her coloring her whole body with stuff, or I know she has. So these, she can do it and not get in trouble. So um, anyway, that's their gift. So that's, I got those, which were really cute. All right. Oh, I got myself some wipes. Oh, I also got, I got to fill this up with candy. Look at this. Isn't this cute? This is a little bitty pinata, and there's a hole right here to put candy in. So I'm gonna fill this with candy, and this will be for both of them since it's their birthdays. Okay, then the other stuff I got at Target is I got these pom poms. This is a garland. I got this in their like party section because I thought it would be cute for photos. Because you guys know I'm always taking photos uh, of my cards and stuff. So I thought, oh, that would be really cute in a photo as a photo prop so anyway i got this it was really cheap and i thought it would be cute if not i'll use it for something else i don't know maybe i'll put it in my party decoration box so there's that and then here's the thing i'm most excited about okay i got these this by the way is a beautiful little valentine card from my friend melissa okay i got these these stack and like kind of click together. And the reason I got these is remember I told you about the classes like working on them? Okay, so here's my idea. I thought for Miss Deborah when she comes to work, this way I could have like, here's my stamp set and my dies. Here's the pieces that I've already pre-cut, oops, and pre-done for my thank you cards for February. And then here's the embellishments I want to use on these cards. So I thought how handy would this be for Miss Deborah? So then what I could do is I could do this and I could take a pencil and a little bitty post-it and I could write February thank yous. And then I could put like 25. So she knows I want 25 of them made. And then I can just put this here. And then I can come in and stack this one right on top of that. I really want to take all these off, but I just painted my nails and I know it'll mess them up. Let's see. Oh, look at that. Dang, take your pick tool coming in handy. Gotta pull it slower so it doesn't leave a bunch of goop behind. Nice. So I'll take the stickers off because I don't like the stickers being in there. Okay, so there's that. And then I have this other one that's like, okay, this is like my work in progress, right? I have this card class. I'm using the new Irresistible Blooms. This is gonna come out in March. So I've got my die, one of my dies, I have my cards. And so I know like this is my March, my one of my March card classes. So then I could label it for that. And then, you know, have another one. So I only bought three, but I thought if this works well, I'll just buy a whole bunch. And then I'll always like kind of have a spot. And so instead of it being spread out all over my countertop, it'll just all be in one nice neat stack. 
I don't know. What do you guys think? You'll have to tell me. Okay. Also at Target, I got this, a Betty White book. This is for sister. So I'm going to wrap this up and give it to her, um, as a little gift just because, because she loves Betty White. Like she's obsessed. So that's for her. I saw it at Target, had to get it for her. And then last but certainly not least, I got these little containers. I got seven of them. They're kind of like the ones that are from Ikea. They have a lid that goes on top and then they stack. Okay, so you're probably like, well, why? Why do you need these? I don't. That's the truth. But here was my thought. When Miss Deborah is creating and stuff, a lot of times she needs little containers like this to like put stuff in. And I was thinking as she is like cutting and prepping the, like a card will fit perfectly in here. So she could be, you know, prepping and putting all those pieces and parts. And then it would have like a nice little lid, easy for her to carry. I don't know. We'll see. Um, but I really like them and I like that they were cheap. They were $5 and I'm going to get rid of some of my other, other ones that we're using that I really don't like. Um, so I was excited to find these. These were a big find for me because look, a card will fit this way. It'll fit this way. I was really excited about it. So anyway, that's what I got. That's all my, all my wares from Target and Staples. And those are all of my big craft room plans. So I don't really have anything else to show you today. Um, I just wanted to hop on, do a fun video, say hello to you, kind of fill you in on more of what's going on in, uh, day in the life type stuff, I guess. And I was hoping you would have some fabulous ideas for me for those Copic markers. And this looks like it's going to work amazing. So that's exciting because I'm going to probably get more of these because this is a great way to kind of contain everything and I just have it ready for Miss Deborah in one spot. All right. Thanks so much for tuning in with me today, you guys. I hope you have an amazing rest of your day and I'll catch you in the next video. Bye-bye.